So then what caught my eye was, I think it was a video you did or a post about uh, using mail for your real estate business. I think you specifically use it for the whole song, though I can understand easily how that generates listings in probate business as well. Can you describe a little bit about the mailing program you've done and, and, and how that's working for you? Great. I, um, well, I did, I did the mailing through all the leads originally when Chad taught us how to do the letters and things like that. I also listened to a podcast, uh, Sharon Bolt, 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 mm -hmm. I can never say her name right. Mm -hmm. I, I think she's in Tennessee mm -hmm. and I actually adapted her letter now, her second, uh, the letter it's, I use that letter first and, um, I haven't been the greatest about sending out second letters right now, but I'm, I've, I've solicited a person because Chad encouraged me to do this, um, to actually compile all my data from all these lists. It's around 3000 of them now and, and categorize them. And then I could start mailing on to, uh, them on a consistent basis. And I learned about the new program, um, actually just got the list, the things to, on it today, open letter marketing, because I've been handwriting, I've been buying the envelopes in a, it's an imitation style envelope, ivory color from Kelly paper. I hand address every one of them, but the letter is typed and then it looks like I signed it. I originally used to sign it, but it got too many. So I signed it. Um, and on my letter, I also add my QR code which has the QR code to my probate estate website. And I specifically always say probate and estate. So I can kind of cover everybody because everybody has some, you know, a property has a state, right? Um, it's not to be large or expensive to be an estate. And then I um, I put those in an envelope, I mail it with a regular stamped envelope, stamp. Every, every week I do that, um, typically on Wednesday afternoons. Um, and then I... I haven't been, I've been so busy with all of it that I haven't done any, I'll be honest with you, I haven't done any phone calls at all unless they come to me. So I know that if I get a second letter and a third letter out there, it's even going to be more powerful because I'm getting good results from just one letter. Wow. Uh, so I, I never, I never don't get, there's about 75 is all I'm sending out a week. It's, it's this list is scrubbed. So it's a more on purpose list because it was something I could handle all the leads. My list was up to over five, almost 500 in just Maricopa County. And I couldn't handle that many by myself effectively. And now the list is different than Chad teaches. So I, I know that I told him that it's, it's actually, um, scrubbed in a sense. And they, I know they have real estate. So I'm only contacting very directly the people that have real estate. So I'm more on purpose um, and it's more effective for my time. So I'm doing that. So that's why I only have about 75 a week right now with the few, like six counties. Um, some of them are really tiny though. But, um, and then I, then um, the phone, usually, I usually get at least one call a week, at least on my, without anything but just the one mailer. So I know that if I, I'll be more effective because we all know after the fifth mailer or whatever, you're going to get more. Um, and so I'm trying to organize it right now so that I can handle it though. You know, nice. me. so I hope that answers your question. Well, let's, let's have a discussion on the topic. So I think a couple of things for people listening, Don is not a brand new agent who fell off a cabbage truck and started mailing, got phone calls and closed them to sell property. In 21 years in real estate, she sold hundreds of properties. Hundreds, hundreds. So yeah. she knows how to sell a house and she knows how to talk to a prospect into listing with her or selling with her. Right. And I think that's a, a key important distinction. So when, when you do call them, uh, Donna, how, how important is your past experience? While it might not be in probate specifically, how important is your general real estate knowledge, your ability to talk to people and have conversations? How important of an asset is that for you to be able to convert those phone calls into oh, business? Really? really important. I mean, to me, the conversation is always about them and what their needs are. It's not about me. I'm not a bragger anyway. That's not naturally. I just got an award at Remax and I didn't even go to the actual ceremony. I just went and picked it up because it's really not my thing. I mean, it's great that I got it. Don't get me wrong, but it's really not about that to me. It's about me being better each day and being more effective each day to my clients. So I want to, and sometimes I don't get every deal for sure. I don't get every deal, but some of those people still call me or still refer me, even if they didn't choose me to buy their house right then or to sell their house for them. So I still think that's effective um, work, you know, working my business that way. Um, 
So, you know, I try to build the rapport, find a commonality, you know, the typical Ford F-O-R-D, right? Um, and build a rapport with them and then try to find out what they really need. What are the key things they really need? And I think the main thing is I don't try to spend time on a bunch of other stuff that I know, right? That they may even need to know eventually, but I try to spend time on only what there is important to them if they really do tell me what's important to them. Sometimes that's hard to pull it out of them, you know? Right, right. But, it's sometimes a little intimate, you know, to use that word purposefully. It's all intimate for people to tell you they need the money or you know, right. why they need the money. And uh, some people don't want to have to admit that. And it's difficult um, sometimes. And there's an art to talking to people to get them to open up that you've obviously mastered at some level and you continue to improve. So again, I want to make sure everybody on the call here is she didn't just throw out some mailers and get some business. This was this was kind of bolted onto a successful business, an award-winning business, bolted onto to increase it rather than um, uh, as a way to launch it from scratch. So let me ask you, Don, if you were starting out from scratch, not that you are, or not you're going to even even if you restarted, you're not starting from scratch. But if you turn to the left or right, there's a new agent starting from scratch. Would you recommend that they do mailers from the very beginning? Is that is that a tool the new agent should yeah. use? It's probably one of the more expensive tools. I mean, it's going to cost you money if you're on a budget. It's going to cost you money. But I, yes, I absolutely say I would do that. You know, and I, um, and I think the other thing I was going to caveat is, is I think the key is having an online presence. So even though I have been in the business for a really long time and I have partners with my, um, my wholesale business and stuff, they don't have a presence at all as a real estate agent or anything like that. I have five or six websites plus my Facebook page. And I am not as super active on Instagram and I definitely don't do TikTok, at least not yet. They're trying to get me to. But I'm just telling you, they Google me and my name's a little bit more, a little different too, but um, they Google me and I have a presence. And I think that that's key because people are as i'm just doing land flipping too and the, the thing they they've noticed is they want to see if you're a real true person or if this is bogus you know what i mean they don't all think that all this marketing stuff is a real person that's really right. going to follow through um right. and i never put my name on a contract that i'm not going to follow through with i will do everything including lose money if i have to to make sure the deal goes through because that's my personality i would never put myself into a contract and a lot of host sellers for instance do like they just get it under contract and they never intend to close. That's not my goal. So I think that online presence super helps me be that. And I, I feel like I need to even do more of it. Like I need to do more videos and I don't necessarily like to, but I think I need to because I think it's a way to be an influencer. Like we, I've been learning that word, like that's really important. Influencer, my kids talk about it. I don't know if you guys have kids. My kids are in the late twenties and thirties and they all talk about influencers that are 20 years old on YouTube making hundreds of millions of dollars, like because they're an influencer, whatever the heck that is, right? They don't even sell a product, right? So um, I think it's really important to put it out there and I'm going to do more. I have, I have professional YouTube videos done and I actually do have one on probate, but my hair is red, so i got to redo it. <laughs> so... I'm, um, I think that's important to be that I have one for attorneys and I have one for the public to nice. just explain what probate is. You know what I mean?